We continue to be working, doing final touches to the mountaintop project here at Monticello. And most recently, for perhaps almost four years on and off, I've been working on reinstalling the private suite, which includes uh, the library that we're standing in today, an annex, the cabinet, and the bedchamber. And as part of that, uh, we spent a lot of time studying how Jefferson chose to uh, undertake this monumental correspondence that he participated in, in really the world of letters. Here we are on a remote mountaintop, and yet he is completely connected with correspondence in Europe, uh, all over what was then part of the United States. And um, as a man of the Enlightenment, he uh, once again implemented sort of reason-based systems for both how he undertakes his incoming correspondence as well as what's much more familiar to all of you, which would be where he uh, executed his outgoing correspondence, which is centered around the very famous uh, polygraph machine. He was inspired by a piece of furniture that he saw in France. And um, in France, it's a very handsome sort of case piece called a pupitre and cartonnier. Apologies for my French. But uh, more interesting and exciting to me was this actual piece of furniture, which was a case piece, and it could be secured, it could be locked, and it featured um, these cardboard file boxes. And that's really the key. That is what got Jefferson excited because by keeping his correspondence in these file boxes, he's able to label them, um, be very specific about what's in them, they can be portable, so he can take them wherever he wants to work. And we know that he ended up using these probably starting around 1785 all the way till the end of his life in 1826. So um, this was sort of an interesting exercise until we took a really good look at a drawing that he left us that's at the University of Virginia. So the drawing tells us that this desk, it's essentially a square mahogany box with a lectern, meaning that it rises up so that he has a surface that um, is angled perfectly for him to be able to see documents that he might be reading, he can use it uh, to support books, uh, and then he can pull it up to wherever he's working. It's an accessory object. It's meant to use in tandem either with his secretary bookcase or the octagonal writing table. Um, and and uh, it rotates, octagonal writing rotates. Um, he really liked that energy of having objects move in space which we take for granted today, revolving office chair. But in those days, it was um, fairly novel, making the furniture move while he could stay stationary and work more efficiently um, without wasted movement. So you might wonder why we put so much time into getting these uh, objects back, uh, either original objects or stand-ins for what we know Jefferson um, commissioned. And this speaks to our mission here at Monticello, which is in part to be sure and interpret the house and represent the house as closely as possible to how Jefferson knew it during his retirement years. And so this can include something very high style, like uh, this small revolving desk that he commissions in Paris and brings back as one of a whole group of furniture. And that's extremely exciting and important. But we also give um, almost equal weight to really humble everyday objects. And this might be surprising when I talk about having such humble objects being an important part of how we research and understand life at Monticello. But um, I have found in talking to people and reflecting on the types of things that I find important, the things that are sentimental to me, it speaks to what people keep. Things like um, a ball of yarn sits on my desk because my mother was a knitter and it means quite a bit to me to think about her and our connection. Um, but also, um, I know that you too have things that you uh, might surprise yourself if you really stop and think about um, humble things that help tell your history. So uh, we invite you to come here and um, see what we've been working on and really bring your frame of reference with you. We think we'll have a good dial.